Good afternoon. I'm Minnesota State Representative John Lesh, and I want to welcome you, my fellow airmen and soldiers, to the 2010 Conference of the Minnesota National Guard Enlisted Association here in Mankato, Minnesota. I'm sorry I cannot be with you in person today. I'm a delegate to the state convention of my party being held right now in Duluth. Saturday is the scheduled day for balloting to choose our next gubernatorial candidate and thereby our next commander-in-chief for the Minnesota National Guard. Most of you can probably tell I look a little old for an E-4, or at least for an E-4 without a record of insubordination. Well, it wasn't until late last summer, at the frail age of 36, that I finally succumbed to the call to serve our state and nation in a military capacity. Like most of you, I had thoughts of military service from a young age, but schooling, marriage, family, and a budding career in law kept me from seriously considering it as an option. My interests remained in the background and helped to spur an ongoing focus on our nation's military priorities, leading to an independent trip to Baghdad in February 2006. It was there that I was able to meet and interview dozens of people, some of whom remain as friends and I keep in touch with them regularly. One, an Air Force veteran and Blackwater contractor, was back in Minnesota for a visit last June. I hosted him and his new bride with a table of other veterans at Mancini's Char House in St. Paul. Another guest at this party brought along Lieutenant Colonel Jacob Kulzer, commanding officer for the Minnesota National Guard Recruiting Battalion. By chance, he and I sat next to each other, and over the course of that dinner, my old interest in service was rekindled. It took a month for me to stop convincing myself that it would never work because I had this impetuous middle child habit of not taking orders well. But it was another veteran and constituent, Tristan Mattis Castillo, who reminded me that if I could swallow BS in the legislature for seven years, I should have no problem in the military. A month after that, I was doing my MEPS physical, signed on the dotted line September 30th, and shipped off to Sand Hill on Fort Benning for infantry basic two weeks later. You are also here because you felt a calling. It may have been masked or explained by other factors in your life, like I wanted training for a job after high school, or I wanted money for college, or I knew I couldn't get dates without a uniform on. But other than those extras, the fact remains that you probably signed your life over to Uncle Sam because you believe in America. You believe in what we stand for, what we stand to lose if we fracture, and what we can achieve when we stand together. In the end, standing together means the willingness to make the ultimate sacrifice in defending our Constitution and our land against all enemies, foreign and domestic. In Minnesota, we have the strongest guard organization in the nation. That strength is due to you. In order to remain strong, we must have your involvement through the Minnesota National Guard Enlisted Association so that your voices can be heard here in Minnesota and at the national level. Some of the current initiatives which need your attention are the $3,000 and $5,000 state tax exemption reinstatement, the retirement pay state tax exemption, and the mid-career state reenlistment bonus. A few weeks ago, I was able to introduce Colonel Colzer on the floor of the Minnesota House of Representatives and use it as an opportunity to thank members for their support of the Minnesota Guard throughout our extraordinary educational benefits toward enlistees. Opportunities like this are not lost on our legislators or on the governor. But you are our stories of success. We cannot win this fight without you. Your voices are also needed at the federal level in securing support for active and reserve components nationally. Now I know what you're probably thinking. When is this guy going to get a haircut? But if you're not thinking that, you're probably also thinking, how do I get involved? Number one, get to know your state legislators. We're more responsive than you might think. And in many cases, this will help you build relationships on the national level as well. Four of Minnesota's eight U.S. representatives 
served in the Minnesota State Legislature. And in the current 111th Congress, 269 out of our 535 total members in the House and Senate, that's over 50 percent, have served in their state or territorial legislatures. This is where your relationships with your elected representatives begin and how you can have even more impact at the federal level. Thank you for your service. You have made me and all of Minnesota proud. I hope I can do the same for you. Have a wonderful conference and I'll see you in the Capitol Rotunda. Oh, and by the way, my haircut is scheduled for next week. <laughs>